We're here in Baden-Baden in Medicine Week, and I'm here with Jerry Curatola, Dr. Jerry Curatola, and he's from New York. He has a clinic there. He's a dentist, a biological dentist, and we're very happy to have him here, and this is your first time in Baden-Baden. This is my first visit to Medicine Week, and um, I've heard about this for years and years, the beautiful baths of Baden-Baden, this beautiful city. You know, the interesting thing is, is that, you know, I, I've been a huge proponent of the, of the essential oral systemic link. You know, the mouth is a mirror and a gateway for what's going on in the body. So there's about 80 to 90 percent of diseases have some sort of manifestation in the mouth and how we deal with it, especially from a biologic standpoint, it's really important that we, uh, medicine and dentistry, really come together and, and collaborate. So here at this Congress Hall, I expected to see more um, oral care products and, and things like that, and there really were not, which is very interesting. Yes, I, at the same time, I know there are a lot of dentists that attend this, and that biological dentistry is a really important part of biological medicine here in Germany. And that's a lot of its birthplace was really from here, too. Whereas, uh, they, were never, they were never separated the way they were in the United States. It, it always seemed very uh, unnatural to me, uh, having been uh, drawn to biologic principles of looking at root causes of disease, recognizing the unique uh, composition all of us have, and psycho-emotional factors that I was never taught in dental school. Um, it's really interesting how it was never separate here. Yes. But back in the states where we're from, it was separate. Yes. And, and now we're, we're seeing these two fields come back together. And, so, yes. and BRMI is really at the forefront uh, of, of teaching that bioregulatory healthcare is medicine and dentistry. They're in harmony. They're one. Yes, yes. There's a marriage between them, that it's, and it's inseparable. But Absolutely. Here, here, at the same time, I think there's also quite a few lectures that were on dentistry, and I just know that many dentists are a part of it. Yeah, yeah, there are many so, dentists coming, and I, what I find fascinating in my first visit here this year, and I had wanted to come for a few years, and, and you know, with BRMI producing and, and uh, this, this tour, um, Finally, when I, when I got here, what I was interested to see is that there's so many really brilliant remedies and therapies uh, that are here that have such great promise for use in clinical practice of dentistry. Yes. Now, I love, you know, I see myself at this stage in my life of being a mentor to the next generation. So, yeah, I love dentistry. I love doing dentistry, love doing good dentistry, and I love taking a biologic bioregulatory approach and but mentoring the next generation is really a, a big part of that and I have I, I had two of my biologic dentists in my clinics uh, come with me uh, one unfortunately had to back up but um, instead uh, one of the biologic dentists took his wife who is a dental hygienist and this is opening a whole new world for them here. Yes. Now you also have, are opening a dental practice in Providence at a clinic there. Can you talk something more about that? Yeah, that, that is um, part and parcel of this movement that bioregulatory medicine and bioregulatory dentists need to be practiced together under one roof. That the referral back and forth and the, the real complete care of the patient in treating the whole patient can't be done by referring the patient out, I believe, to a biologic dentist somewhere across town that we don't even know or can't control what he's doing and how he's doing it. So the American Center for Bioregulatory Medicine and Dentistry is a really exciting place. The um, short name for that is Biomed Center, the Biomed Center New England. And it's T-H-E-B-I-O-M-E-D-C-E-N-T-E-R-N-E -E 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 dot com. <laughs> The really nice thing about the Biomed Center in New England is the fact that it is state of the art and the programs that we're doing uh, are, we're, we're going to be able to treat people in a more comprehensive way uh, and I think we're going to see terrific results um, in, in, in New England 
and hopefully in other parts of the country as well. It's, it's a wonderful model and it's a proven model here in, in Germany and in Switzerland, in Austria as well, where they have dentistry together with the, the medical doctors. And as you say, this way they, they can work with each other very closely, very intimately. Uh, insofar as preparing the patient for the dentistry in, in a medical way and also afterwards doing like drainage types of, of Absolutely. therapy. Yeah. And so they went hand in hand, it works much better than that way than, than to have it separate like what we see in, in North America. Yeah. No, that's absolutely true. And, and it's interesting you, you say that. I mean, the, the Biomed Center in New England is the first and largest of its kind in North America. Uh, and certainly, you know, we're cousins, your organization, uh, Bioregulatory Medical Institute, which has such a, an important academic function. And what, what we're doing in the clinical setting in bringing great practitioners together uh, is going to, I think, have a great impact on the ability to make this type of care yes. much more commonplace in the future. Yeah, I see it as a, as a perfect model and it'll sh it should spread you know, become a contagion, hopefully throughout the United States and, and throughout North America. Yeah. But, now, Jerry, you also, uh, I know that you're into the microbiome of the mouth, and I've heard you lecture on this and how important it is in, in relation to you know, systemic illnesses. And you have actually come up with a toothpaste. Now, one of the <laughs> uh, areas of um, great uh, imbalance in, in the human microbiome, besides the gut, um, you know, we always think of the gut microbiome as the principal microbiome, but the oral microbiome is as important and even has a protective function. So the oral microbiome protects you from deadly viruses and bacteria, even in the world around us. It keeps us alive, it makes vitamins, but the most amazing thing in the 20 years of research that I've done on the oral microbiome, the, the biggest uh, aha moment I had was that the bacteria in our mouths in this community are an intelligence. It's a semi-permeable membrane, but it has a real intelligence, and it performs vital functions. The bacteria help to remineralize our teeth. You know, I was in dental school. They said, oh, you've got to kill the bacteria. The bacteria are bad. They're invaders. So we had the germ theory, and then we had the good guy, bad guy theory, which was, well, there's good bacteria and bad bacteria, and the good ones we call probiotics. The bad ones we call pathogens. Well, the aha moment was the same bacteria that cause tooth decay and gum disease are actually benign and, and, and in, a, in a balanced environment. They flip a pathogenic switch and they go from healthy, cooperative, commensural to pathogenic um, when the terrain ha is in balance. And you know, as a, as a naturopath yourself and a naturopathic doctor, you guys had it right all along. Um, that it wasn't about the seed, it was about the soil and the terrain. And that terrain in the mouth remineralizes your teeth. It takes ionic minerals from saliva, calcium and phosphorus, and actually remineralizes your teeth. And um, it also brings oxygen to the gums and takes waste products away. The bacteria are doing vital functions to keep us alive and healthy throughout our body. So, you know, I always say um, that uh, we're made of bacteria yes. and that bacteria really run us. They yeah. paid a high evolutionary price to be where they are. Right. And, and then I, and I, the best thing we could do as doctors is to get out of the way <laughs> and stop messing up that process. Yes. And when we do that and we make peace with our microbes, um, some amazing things start to happen with our autoimmune response, with our um, nutrition, our ability to thrive on good nutrition. And so I started making this product as a um, kind of like feed your mouth, you know, feed your smile, because there was a study from Japan from a Japanese dental researcher who biopsied diseased gums and found very, very low levels of vitamin C and another what is a cofactor in the Krebs cycle, we thought of as a nutrient, it's not really a vitamin, but coenzyme Q10. So coenzyme Q10 is so vital for metabolic function. So when the metabolism in the mouth slows down, you get very low levels of CoQ10, low levels of vitamin C, and those were really important. But then we put vitamin E, MSM, and what I'm really excited about is all the research that's been done on vitamin K2, 
uh, Maniquilone 7, MQ, MK7, reducing inflammation, calcium metabolism, uh, bone density, enamel remineralization of teeth. So we put that in here. But the interesting thing is that this has been, the energetic resonance of this product has been checked. Not only does it do, we've done double blind clinical research with this in the mouth and, and, and have done our homework. And we have a nearly 50% reduction in gingival inflammation. And what's interesting about gingival inflammation is that it's the body's number one source of chronic low-grade inflammation that has ravaging effects through the body. Number so you know, one source. You, you deal with that all the time when you see sick patients. You're dealing with the consequences of chronic inflammation and how debilitating that is and how it's, you know, you know that silent alarm bell that your immune system is just burning out from. And so we have to turn that off and deal with that. And so reducing inflammation is a primary aim. Um, you know, certainly uh, an, another one is promoting microbial homeostasis. You have a stronger defensive mechanism. And there's so much that goes on in the mouth that has profound effects in the whole body. So, I mean, Alzheimer's to colorectal cancer. Yes, yes. Women of, pre uh, of childbearing years um, have a 700% higher chance of having pregnancy complications. Yes. You know, so everything, heart disease, cancer, lots of cancers have been linked to gum disease. Gum disease and cancer, breast cancer, autoimmune lung cancer, diseases. autoimmune diseases, yes. rheumatoid arthritis, for example. So all of that, and so, you know, we had people um, you know, brushing with this. Actually, one of the studies we did was in Rome, Italy, and the um, Italian dentists who were doing the study uh, kept running out of product. And so I, we only had 10 subjects in each of the control, the control group and the Revitin group, and I flew over to Rome to meet with them, and they came clean, and they all started laughing. They said, the product works so well that they started taking it home to their girlfriends their and family. their mama and everybody else. Yes, so. yes. So it was very, very interesting. But this has been a, a crusade for me um, because I think this product can improve the health of, of billions of people around the world just by brushing. Well, I have it in my office, and I can't keep it in the office if people come and purchase it, and then I have to order more. And it's all a good thing, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna, to um, kind of build this. This was a grassroots uh, type of thing, but I was... I was excited to bring this product to this meeting because I wanted the opinion of some people that I respect um, about what they, um, what they believed energetically this product represented. There is an energetic resonance, and actually you, it's so natural you can swallow it, yes. so it improves the gut microbiome also, yes. not just the oral microbiome. It's different than some toothpaste that have fluoride in it, which you can't swallow. That there's a poison warning on toothpaste yes. because of that. A lot of people don't know that, that there are a lot of ingredients, even in natural toothpaste. Um, it all gets back to what I was speaking about earlier, which is just because it's natural doesn't mean it's good for you. I mean, arsenic is natural and a lot of other natural things. But there are natural toothpastes that have a lot of essential oils that, that nuke, that kill and disturb and destroy the essential oral ecology, which we call the microbiome. Yeah. So... Just because it is, um, there's a lot of fads. So there's a lot of fads with uh, coconut oil, for example. Everybody thinks this is like magic to coconut oil. Well, coconut oil, is, is a, it, to me, it's a superfood. I love coconut oil on things. But, but at the same time, um, using coconut oil in an oil pulling actually strips the microbiome. It has a detergent effect, yeah. just like sodium lauryl sulfate does in conventional toothpaste. So if your mouth is very unhealthy and out of balance, coconut oil pulling will help for a week or two, but it should not be done long term. It should, it should only be for a period, I believe, of a couple of weeks, and then you should go to something that nourishes, restores, and replenishes. And that's what, it, that's what Revitin does. The magic of Revitin is not that it's so unbelievably complicated and all, but very simple. It's based on the principle of respecting our microbial composition. Yes, yeah. And, and it tastes good. And allow it to self-regulate. Allow it to self-regulate. It respects the body's self-regulating, self-healing, and self-regulatory mechanisms. 
the, the same thing with mouthwashes too though. There's a lot of really toxic mouthwashes out there that disturb the microbiome of the mouth. And people don't realize that. Yeah. I mean, and there was a study, you know, Listerine used to have triple the amount of alcohol for years and years and years. My mother loved Listerine because it burned her mouth and she felt like that meant that it was working. It's working yes, <laughs> God yes. rest her soul. She was wonderful. She produced the son as a dentist, but she always was obsessed with her teeth and using products that were, and she had a lot of erosion on her teeth as she got older from using products that did not respect the microbial composition that we were speaking about. But like Listerine actually came out that there was a study linking it to oral cancer back then that raised everybody's uh, you know, eyebrows. And we now, you know, the product has gone through some succession acquisitions by other companies. It's still on the market. It's a very established brand, but there's still alcohol in it. And uh, now the trend is going alcohol free. But an interesting thing about mouthwash is that it's one of those uh, American man-made things that doesn't serve any useful purpose. Like, for example, I love oral irrigation with a water pick type device. What does um, you know, a water pick uh, irrigation device yes, do? Yes. It certainly removes food particles and things like that that would be left to begin to ferment and, and, and shift a balance, especially sugars, um, shift a pH balance and shift the microbial balance in the mouth. But what, what it also does is, is it, it helps with circulation. So there's a lot of stagnation in circulation between teeth. When there's food there and plaque there, there's stagnation. And, you know, ir water irrigation is helpful to improving the circulation there. And, and, and just like it would be helpful in other parts of the body, like hydrotherapy is really effective. And that's where um, I think that's better than using a mouthwash. So, Jerry, also, what would you say to your colleagues back in North America? Should they come to a conference like this and, and understand more about the marriage of dentistry and, and medicine? Yeah, I mean, I, I could sum that up with, and, and I would love for you to meet the young dentist and his wife who I brought on this uh, trip, on this tour. And um, I just want to say he summed it up uh, after attending some of the lectures and going through this and like for example what you and I both found very fascinating at this meeting this year was photon energy and that that infrared and red photon energy and what it can do and the application for the chair side of swelling yeah. and after dental surgery and and uh, or other dental procedures TMJ pain all these kinds of things that can be treated with light energy and there was a big trend, I think, in this meeting. Uh, I've been in other similar meetings to this, none as large and comprehensive as what was here uh, with so many products from Europe and around the world. But um, there, are, there is a huge trend with light energy. And so the dentist who was here was absolutely, he said this has completely opened him up to a, an entire new world of therapies and, and products that he can incorporate yes. to be a better dentist, to give a better result to his patients, and be less invasive and kinder in, in terms of, you know, we are doctors of dental surgery, so traditionally, you know, the drill was our number one tool, and now we're using lasers and light and all these other therapies yes. that, you know, we're moving more in the direction, as you know. Even ozone, too. Uh, yeah, ozone is, is evolving as well. Mm -hmm. I think the use of ozone in biologic dentistry was not, it was it was sort of a right church, wrong pew kind of thing. It was being overused as a, as a general tonic and that was very disturbing to the microbiome. So I always was very conservative about ozone use because of the nature of the microbiome. The better way to heal is not to go in and just try to nuke everything, but the better way to heal is to go in and promote this microbial balance. Like, like our, our microbial composition is as unique as our DNA, unique as our thumbprint. And, and that's why I think dentists, I encourage every dentist who may see this to come to a meeting like this. It will expand your horizons more than you ever thought possible. Okay, well, thank you, Jerry. Thanks yeah, so much pleasure. for sharing all this. Thanks. Thanks, James.